Yeah, so I'm really excited to be here with Damien today talking about Office Scripts with Power Automate. Damien has a really cool demo of how you can use Power Automate and Office Scripts together to populate an Excel template, but that's all I'll say because I think he's done a really great job with it, and I don't want to spoil all the surprises. Just as a quick recap before I go on to the next slide, Office Scripts is an automation platform on Excel on the web, and so if you have a, a E3 license or above of Office 365, then you're able to access this tab and automate your workflow using our action recorder and code editor. The code editor uses Office JS. You can learn more at our new portal page. So this is something that was put together by our team. I'm really excited that, to share this out. We can definitely send this out for anyone that is interested. Um, this is a new place where you can um, view all the things about Office scripts and also get be updated on the latest updates. And with that, without further ado, I'm going to let Damien take control here. So Damien, go ahead. Perfect. Thanks, Nancy, for the, the wee intro. If I just jump into my, my opening slide. So uh, today, I just want to say, first of all, thanks very much, David and Nancy, for inviting me along. And thanks for the opportunity to present. Um, my name is Damien Bird, as you've heard already. I'm available on all the social media platforms as DamoBird365. I'm very much a community developer. I'm active on the Power Platform community site, and in March was the top uh, non-super user. Um, so feel free to, to reach out and connect. I've worked in IT the past 20 years, uh, thoroughly enjoy exploring business process automation, and uh, the solution I'm about to demonstrate primarily uses Power Automate, but also relies on Excel scripts. Uh, as, you'll, as you'll see, the two tie up nicely together. So the purpose of my use case is really to demonstrate how you can populate Excel files using both Power Automate and Excel scripts without the need for tables in Excel, which is the, the current limitation of the, the cloud flow actions at the moment. So I'm about to demonstrate invoicing, but equally you could use it for issue tracking or time cards or money management. So I've, I've seen lots of uh, good examples of Excel scripts to perform, perform functions uh, that are not native to Power Automate. Um, but what I'll do now is I'll, I'll jump on to my demonstration. And, and one of the key things for you to maybe uh, do on your own PCs right now is you'll see a URL on that uh, slide I've got to Excel demo. If you want to jump onto that page, if everything goes to plan, I've got uh, an extra bonus at the end. So here I am on the, the page that I've asked you to look at, and there's a, there's a series of links here, but we'll move on to that uh, later on. So I've got here a SharePoint site, and uh, to, to make things uh, more visual, I've got a couple of lists. And so I've stored the data for the, the customers into a list. Now, in, in a real life scenario, you might be using a SQL database or, or the Dataverse to store this data. But I think for this demo, it just makes it easier to, to visualize. So We've got a customer reference, which is um, unique to this, these individual companies. And then we've got data that's going to be, get pulled across onto the, the invoice template that I've got. I've then got a, a second list. Again, you'll notice that the customer reference is key here. We've got a one-to-many relationship. So this would be, in effect, the uh, monthly transactions that have been carried out by the business that we're looking to invoice these individual companies. And then we've got a series of columns here relating to the quantity, like an item number, for instance, a reference, a description. So we're obviously billing here for work relating to building Power Automate, the unit price, and then a discount for each of these lines. And, and you'll see that the discount varies depending on the uh, customer reference and the different uh, description and job that we've been co completing. And so what I, what I plan to do is I'm going to pull this information across and uh, populate this Excel uh, invoice. So jumping onto the Excel invoice, you'll see here I've uh, picked up a template actually from uh, Microsoft and uh, I've put a nice little header at the top there. But what we're looking to do is using those fields that were on that list, we're going to populate uh, the unique fields here for, for the company. There's going to be an invoice number, an invoice date, various other cells, and then the sort of more interesting bit are these individual lines that relate to the, the data that is in those tables. 
And, and like I say, that the data that's in those those lists, I, I've used it as a visual and a real life scenario. You're going to have a front end system somewhere capturing this transactional information, but it's the the flow that does the the clever work with Excel scripts. I will I'll jump onto the the automate tab as well and uh, just open up the the script before I jump onto my flow. So I was lucky enough to have the Excel team look at my uh, script. I'm not a JavaScript programmer um, or a TypeScript programmer, but I was able to build this solution uh, entirely by myself just by reading the content that's online and, and relying on some of the material that Microsoft have already put together on the, the developer site. So jumping into the script, um, you can see here I've defined a, a series of uh, variables that are used in the call to the script in the Cloudflow. So you'll see these things later on, things like the invoice, invoice number, the date, the payment method and check number. Um, there are also uh, references to the customer, which makes up the cells here. And there's also the sales array, which makes up all the individual lines in the, the invoice. And so the Excel script, you can see, uh, updates these individual cells, so G2, G3, based on the variable that's passed in the, the header of this function or, or via the, the cloud flow call. Um, we then got uh, a similar example here where we've defined a range. So we've got C2 to C6, which is this particular range here of the customer, and we're applying, applying things like the name, the customer name, and such like. And then a slightly different example, we've got a loop here. Um, it starts at row 12, which is where the first line of our invoice begins. And then we're looping through the array and again, applying those values into the, the row in the Excel sheet. At the bottom, this was a bit that I hadn't really grasped. And I'm grateful to the Excel team for having a look. Um, the, the keen programmers will know exactly what they're doing, but uh, defining interfaces here. So. This is how the arrays are defined uh, and how Power Automate knows what um, fields need passed onto this, this uh, script. So I'm going I'm to close this file down now and jump into my flow. And I'll go into uh, edit that flow. And so at the moment, I've got it set up as a manual flow. And in a real life scenario, again, you might have a recurrence trigger so that it's uh, running at the end of every month or every week, depending on how often you want to build. And then the first uh, action I do here is to get the invoice template. So on my demo uh, SharePoint site, I have a, a template file and uh, I, I grab a copy of that because I ultimately don't want to overwrite it. And then I've got a couple more actions to get the, the two lists that we saw earlier, the customer accounts list and the items, um, the work complete list. And again, in a real life scenario, you might have uh, an OData filter in place there to just retrieve the data that's relevant for the month that it's running, for instance, or the week that it's running. At the moment, it's running for everything. And then I jump into an apply to each. So this apply to each is uh, running off the, the value that's retrieved from the uh, customers. Uh, and so that will obviously traverse through every single customer that's in that initial list. So in, in this scenario, there were four customers that will run through those uh, those four as a loop. And the first thing that I do is to create a copy of that file. So using the company name and just to create uh, a unique uh, file name, I'm using the format date time expression um, to pick up the, the month and the year and append that to the file name. And then I pick up the file content from the original invoice that I've picked up at the top here. Uh, and that's just so I've created a, an empty copy of the original invoice. Then on the uh, array that we've uh, created or the, the array that we've received from the work complete at the top there, we're then doing a filter based on the cu customer reference. So I mentioned that the customer reference was integral to the the, both the customer account and the work done. We've got a one-to-many relationship there. And because we're in a loop, we're able to pick up that customer reference that's relevant to this particular loop or this particular customer. And we retrieve all of the uh, work items that are equal to that customer reference. For the purpose of my testing, I had uh, another uh, um, compose action here just purely to check the length of the array that was returned from that filter just to make sure that uh, 
when I was expecting eight, the, the length was eight. And uh, finally, in order to just get the um, data into the right format, into the, the right uh, array format, I'm using this uh, select action here and then uh, sort of mapping out all of the values or the keys that we saw in the Excel script and passing on all of these values here. So that, that's built up the array that's getting passed to the script. And so running the script itself, um, you uh, pick the, the name of uh, the, the script here, sorry, that you can see called script. So I've got an Excel script version two. And uh, we use the file ID, which is based off of the create file invoice. And then again, some more dynamic content like the uh, invoice number I've made up using the customer reference and, and today's uh, date and time. Some of the values I've just put in plain text, but ultimately in a, in a real life scenario, you might want to use some dynamic content. And then one of the sort of interesting uh, features here is that I'm, I'm passing uh, data to the uh, script as an array for the sales, but for the customer, it's actually split up into individual uh, fields. And that's based on the end of the, the script where you def define, or in fact, it's not the, the end, but you saw at the end of the script where the, the fields were defined at the top, um, there was the um, definition for an array versus a non-array for the, the the customer. And this is where it's getting a bit technical for me. So the, the programmers will know what I mean. But that's, that's sort of covered the, the basics of uh, the cloud flow. At the bottom here, I've got a part two optional bit, which is the, the clever bit. I'm not going to go into detail on this one. If it runs, it's, a, it's an added bonus. But uh, the aim is here using some of the out of the box or the the the, the connectors that are included as part of Office 365, I am going to try and turn the Excel file into a PDF as well so that you, you have a nicely finished invoice. So I'm going to go ahead with uh, testing it now. And uh, we'll go ahead here and hit the run flow. So the actual process at the moment takes about 60 seconds to go through all of those uh, records and uh, feed the information to Excel via the script for each of those four files. And there's also that other extra bit as well, which will add to the, the overhead. But if I jump back to my SharePoint site and into my documents folder, this is where I store the template invoice, but I've also got an invoices folder here. And this is where my invoices are being created created as we speak as, as the cloud flow is running. So I'm pleased to say that we've at least got two out of the uh, four so far. I'm just going to wait until the process is completed because I don't want to disturb the, the files. I'd really like this whole thing to run without a hitch. So I think we're only a few seconds away from, from a finish now. Oh, there we go. So your flow has run successfully. Perfect. So, so back onto my SharePoint site. If I open up marketing for you, for instance, and look at the, the invoice here, we can see we've got uh, Tracy Manning, who works for marketing for you. And here are the, the various uh, lines of the invoice that relates to uh, the work that we're billing for that month. And one of the other sort of curious things, it's, it's pretty uh, basic, but it's 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 a, a great feature to have because this is an Excel file. You've obviously got all the formulas, so it's calculated things like the the line totals. It's it's worked out the discounts that we've passed on dynamically through the Cloudflow. It's worked out the subtotal, and one of the variables in the in the Cloudflow, if you were watching, was the the VAT rate, so twenty percent, and and all that's worked out nice and neat. So the added bonus, if this has worked, if I jump back onto the uh, SharePoint site here, you'll see where I had my my links to the various social media platforms. If I go ahead and just refresh that page, we'll see now we've got four links to the various invoices. So if I click on, on marketing for you, uh, it'll actually open up the invoice in PDF format. So that was the, the second part of the the demonstration, which I'm pleased to say it has worked. And that is uh, basically 
the end of the demonstration. I hope everyone enjoyed that and and followed it. <laughs> Any questions? Yeah, thanks, Damien. That is really awesome. It's taken it all the way to the PDF. I can see uh, everybody's really appreciating it there. Thank you, Damien, and uh, that was a fantastic demo. Thank uh, you.